Today is part two of a four-part lesson on the purpose of church music. And we've already looked at, in part one, that we were to expose the audience to the gospel. That means the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our second uh, part, our second point and purpose of the church music in our churches today is to educate the listeners and performers in biblical truth. Uh, as like I said before, we are a church that holds to the old time gospel. We sing hymns, and the reason why we sing hymns, part of that is because we want to educate the listeners and the performers in biblical truth. Music is a powerful teaching tool, and we can use it in our churches to teach our people about the deep, rich doctrines in God's Word. And it should be utilized in the churches. The churches of today have gone way astray with the music they're bringing in. They're bringing in the music of the world, you see. We have to understand that Satan, fallen angel who was Lucifer before, wants to use music as well to teach people his ways. And I want us to look at a, a scripture here from Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 13 that talks about Satan. And it says, Thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets, of thy pipes, was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so that thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou was walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. And I want us to focus in on 13. It says, of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. We have to understand that Satan created as Lucifer, one of the greatest of the angels that God had to lead the heavenly choruses in worship had these pipes built into him. He didn't have to have an instrument like we do, a guitar or a piano or whatever it is to proclaim and worship God. But he had his musical instruments prepared already in him to lead the heavenly choruses. And we have to think of that because Satan is the master musician. And he wants to use the music of this world to captivate our hearts and our minds and to draw us away from true worship and true biblical truth in our churches. And that's what's happening across America today. And we as churches need to come back to the old time gospel, to the truth of God's word. And we need to educate our listeners and the performers in biblical truth when we sing music in our churches. And we just need to remember that the world wants to influ influence our churches, wants to influence our hearts and our minds. You see, the world has a message that they want to get out. And they're using music to get their message out. But you see, God has a message in his Bible for us. And he wants us to get that message out. And what better way than using the music in our churches to get out and educate our people in the truths of God's word. I want to end our uh, lesson two, or part two of this uh, four-part lessons, with this scripture. Colossians 3.16 says this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And that's what we want to do. We want to teach and admonish our people in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And we want our people to sing with grace in their hearts to the Lord. Isn't that what you want to do today? Is sing with grace in your heart.